Salute, welcome to this video lesson on our Latin 1A intro verb unit. So the first topic we need to talk about is principal parts in Latin. Now, most verbs up to this point, you've seen them listed in a form like amat with a T on the end, and that means he, she loves. So we're gonna talk about the principal parts of Latin verbs. You can see here amo, amare, amawi, amatum, the four principal parts, four basic forms from which all other forms of the verb amo, amare, to love, come. So really, of those four, uh, and here we're talking about from amo all the way through amatum there, from those four, you really only need the first two right now. The first verb form, the first principal part, we call it, ends with either an O or an M. Those letters O and M indicate the subject is I. So, amo, for instance, means I love, dokeo means I teach, mito means I send, audio means I hear, copio means I take, and sum means I am. So, most verbs have an O on the end, and um, sum, the being verb, has an M on the end. The second form, the second principal part that you need to know um, will end typically with an RE, although irregular verbs like sum SA will have SE instead. And that's the present active infinitive. Now you might be asking yourself what an infinitive is. In English, infinitive verb forms start with to. So we could say to love, to walk, to eat. Those are all present active infinitives in English. So let's look through the Latin ones. So amare here means to love, docere means to teach, mitere to send, audire to hear, capere to take, and then essay is kind of the weird one out, it means to be. So those are the first two principal parts. Um, the second principal part typically, or looking at the first two principal parts here, you can see the letters that I've bolded. Those are kind of telling us what conjugation is which. O-R-A verbs are first conjugation with a thematic A vowel. A-O, A-R-A verbs are second conjugation with the long E thematic vowel. O-R-A verbs are third conjugation. They have a weak vowel that changes. It could be an, a short E, short I, or a short U. Uh, E-O, E-R-A words like audio, audire, um, those are fourth conjugation and they have a long I thematic vowel. Capio capere is an example of a third I-O. It's kind of a cross between third and fourth. And then finally, sum esse is an irregular verb. When I say irregular, I mean it doesn't work normally. Think about to be in English. We say to be, but we say I am, we say he, she, it is, and we say they are, you are. So the forms change a lot. It's irregular. Okay, now let's look at some specifics. So we just talked about the uh, present active infinitive. So the present active infinitive is the second principal part of the verb. So when you see me list principal parts like amo, amare, dokeo, dokeri, mito, mitere, the second one is the infinitive in Latin. Now that re on the end, or the se for se, indicates that we should translate this as to verb in English. So amare is to love, Adire is two here, and so on. We talked about that up above, but here you see it laid out specifically. Okay, then we have the present active singular imperative. We've talked about these already in class because we've seen them in stories. These always end with a vowel. Uh, you make them by removing the RE from the infinitive, that is from the second principal part, the ones listed up above. And when you remove that RE, you end with just a vowel at the end. So ama, love singular, doke, teach singular, mite, send as a singular command, cape, take as a singular command, uh, aldi, hear as a singular command, and then s would be an example, just be. Um, so you could say be good, s probus, s bonus, something like that. Now, if we want to make those plural, we've also seen these in our stories. To make a plural imperative, essentially we normally just add TE to the singular imperative. But if we have short E type verbs, those are called third conjugation verbs. Like, for example, mito, mitere, which we've got in these examples. And also the third IO verbs like copio, copere, which we have in these examples. Those verbs um, change the final short E 
to an I before adding the TE. So notice I've highlighted metite and capite because you might have expected those to be metete and capete with an ETE, -E, but instead you have ITE. Otherwise, though, you're just taking ama, which is a singular, add the TE, you get amate. That's a plural command, love. Uh, take doke, singular command to teach, and dokete, adding the TE, plural to teach. Take S, which means B, singular, as a command, and then este with the, te, uh, with the TE, rather, or te sound, means B, plural. So essentially just adding the TE, except for, again, mitite and kapite, which change a little bit differently. Our final thing is that we want to look at conjugations of the present tense. Now when we talk about conjugating uh, verbs in any language, what we're talking about really is putting them into a chart form with the various kinds of subject um, forms of the verb. So I can talk about I do a thing, you do a thing, he, she, it does it. We could say we do it, y'all do it, and they do it. Latin, just like uh, many other um, languages, such as Spanish, Italian, and French, and German, has different forms of the verb so that you spell the verb differently depending on what the subject is. For example here, taking the first column, amo means I love, amas means you love, amat means he, she, it loves, amamas means we love, and amatus means y'all love or you plural love, and then finally amat is they love. So the highlighted letters at the end are indicating the subject. So notice that this is um, the first conjugation. These kind of verbs have thematic vowel A. The only place you don't see the A is in the AMO form. All the others have the A and then these special endings added. S for you singular, T for he, she, it, mus for we, tis for y'all, and NT for they. You can see the other verbs work um, similarly to this. So dokeo, I teach. Dokes, you teach. Doket, you te or he, see, he, she, it teaches. I'm going too fast. Uh, Dokemus, we teach. Doketus, y'all teach. And dokent, they teach. Um, here you have the E in all the forms. So this is the um, second conjugation, long E type uh, verbs. The E gets shortened by the final O here, and the E gets shortened by the final T here, and by the NT here. Otherwise, you have a long E through there. Now, mitometry is one of the funky ones that has the vowel that changes. So sometimes you get an I, sometimes an E, like you get in the imperative singular and the infinitive, and then sometimes you get a, L a U, like we get here at the end here. So mito, I send. Most of the ones through the middle have an I, so metis, you send, metit, he, she, it sends, metemos, uh, metemos is we send, metitis is y'all send, and then he, we switch vowels, metunt, they send. The switch to the U is just a phonetic thing because of the following N. Uh, since the next letter is N, uh, it changes that sound from I to U. It's just easier for the Romans to say. Now, let's skip on to audio first, and then we'll come back to copio. So, audio, audis, audit, audimus, auditus, audiunt. You can see you have an I throughout here. These are the fourth conjugation, or strong I verbs. Um, so, the I is normally long, like in audis, audimus, and auditus, but it gets shortened in audiunt because of the following U. That's kind of a weird feature. And it gets shortened by the final T in audit, and it gets shortened by the O that follows it in audio. Now if we look back to copio, it's kind of a bridge between mito and audio. Um, these type of verbs are called third IO and they're gonna have an IO at the end of the first part and the ERE at the end of the second part. So copio, capis with a short I, so that's more like mitis over here rather than audis with the long I, and then you go capit, capimus, short I, like mitimus, not like audimus, right? And then you get capitus, again, the short I, like matitus, not the long I, like auditus. And then our last one is capiunt. Well, that again is like the fourth conjugation. So capiunt and capio are like audio and audiunt, and the ones in the middle are more like the forms of mito. Our very last verb, the irregular verb sum, goes sum, s, est, Sumus estis sunt. 
Sum es est, sumus estes sunt. Best way to, to memorize this is just chanting it or writing it out. Sum es es, sumus estes sunt. Most of the endings are the same, so you still have S as the ending for you. You still have a T for the ending for uh, he, she, it. You still have mus for we, tis for y'all, and then NT for they. However, you have an M instead of the O um, for the I ending. You will notice here what makes this verb irregular. I talked about is and are and am in English, how it changes. Notice this verb in Latin has SU sometimes, and in other times it starts with ES, right? So sum starts with SU, so does sumus and sunt, but S, S, and estus all start with ES. Alrighty, so sum means I am, S is you are, est with a T is he, she, it is, sumus is we are, estus is y'all are, and sunt is they are. Well, this is our just our first time through this, but hopefully a lot of this is making sense. If not, we'll just keep practicing practicing this and you'll eventually understand. Walet omnes, usquid proximum tempus. Till next time.